Vegeta started off his combo by doing some type of guard break. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I'm going to show you uh, slow footage here, but it actually, when you do see it, when he, Vegeta goes in for that headbutt, it does show that Goku's guard breaks. However, remember in the last video, the in-depth analysis, how we broke down how when characters are doing super moves or different types of animations that are like super moves, that their body glows. And if you can see there, when Vegeta charges in towards Goku, his body, Goku's body is glowing. And then after Vegeta hits him, it breaks. So I don't know if Goku was charging up a type of a, like a regular attack, which we'll go into that in a second here, or if he was charging up a super move and you're able to break those by attacking. It seems like that would only obviously work for like real-time super moves, like a real-time Kamehameha or a real-time rush attack move which i don't even think that tenkaichi had those but you can kind of see with this gameplay again i'm gonna slow it down so y'all can see it here too i thought that was very interesting because we didn't see anything like that one in previous tenkaichi games that i can remember unless i'm wrong or even in the last gameplay trailer that we got for sparking zero so that seems like a new mechanic they're adding it was really quick, so I can see how people would miss it, but I thought that was very interesting. What am I dynamics? This is Dr. Love, and this is going to be another Dragon Ball Sparking Zero in-depth analysis video for the second gameplay trailer that we, did get, that we did get for this game. I'm hoping we get a lot more because the game is still on wishlist. We don't have a release date, so let me know. what if, Do y'all think it's going to come out by the end of this year or sometime next year? I hope it's this year just because I want it. I don't want to wait a whole nother year because it is January, so that's another 11 months and then some. If it's sometime this year, I'm cool with it, but we still don't have a release date, so it makes me a little worried. Another thing here I noticed in the gameplay, which the gameplay is really fast, so I can understand why you guys would miss this. I mean, it's Tenkaichi. It's going to be fast gameplay. But the thing here is that when Goku charges and dashes around him with the Kaioken, Vegeta, if you look there too, Vegeta, I like how you can tell as like another distinction when characters are using super moves. Vegeta, Vegeta's body's glowing here as well, and he, he threw a key blast at him. It looks like a regular charge key blast to me because Scout of Vegeta doesn't have like big bang attack or any attacks like that. I don't know what else that attack could have been besides charging a key blast. So you know how we discussed that when you do super moves, you know, we know this from different screenshots in the gameplay when characters use super moves and I'm assuming ultimate attacks as well. They have a glow around their body, which is cool. I like it, whatever. But for regular key blasts, like not the regular ones, but if you're charging a key blast, if your body glows. That would be interesting, and that would also make sense as to why you could probably armor break a character that's using that, because, you know, they're just taking too long to attack, so you can go in to attack them instead, and then, I don't know if they're going to have their own type of stamina system, or if, if it's just going to go with the key, most likely with key, uh, hand in hand, just like how the old Budokai games and the old Budokai Tenkaichi games, that was something that I thought was really interesting, and something that is very easy to miss, so definitely look out for that as well, as I'm going to show you that on the screen here. Now, remember how I mentioned, you know, like what, a minute ago, how when it comes to charge attacks, if their bodies are going to glow or not, I did notice here, and I did this exact same combo in Tenkaichi 3 that I'm going to show you up here as well. When Goku goes behind Vegeta and he starts to attack him, that last charged up kick, if you look there, Goku's body has like some weird, it's, it, his body is glowing, I'm pretty sure it's because he's in the Kaioken, but if you look there right before he unleashes the kick in I think Raging Blast was like this as well, but in Budokai Tenkaichi, after a couple, like maybe like a second, a second and a half of you charging your attack, your body would start to flash. If you let go of the attack right before the flash, then you vanish, right? And all the characters have different timings with that. But here, instead of a flash, it was just like, I don't know, like a little spark of, of energy or whatever that was, just like kind of came out of Goku before, pause, <laughs> before he released the kick. So I don't know if they're just changing the animation with that or if that's going to have something to do with combo cancels like in the Raging Blast, well, Raging Blast 2 greatly expanded on it, but any charge attack that you have besides super moves, if you guard while you're charging it, you can cancel the animation. So like for a key blast, a punch, a kick, all that type of stuff, if you're charging it, you can guard and cancel. Same with the Budokai games. They took it from that game series. And I liked it a lot in Raging Blast 2, way more than in Raging Blast 1. If they brought that back into Sparking Zero, I would not complain at all because I think that that would expand the gameplay, if anything. If not, it also is what it is, you know, probably added in, in like a sequel or later by adding some gameplay changes. But I did think that this was a little bit interesting. You know, it looks, it definitely looks like they're just taking most things from, like straight up from Tenkaichi and, and Raging Blast. However, this one did catch my attention just because... It could be either or, or maybe it could be both. We don't know. Here's something else that I actually thought was really interesting about this. 
You know when Goku does that one, I completely forgot what the move is called, but he does that move where he dashed up to Frieza, you know, when he did that combo on Namek to him when he was Super Saiyan. I'm gonna just show you the dive kick on here and repeat the animation. If you look in the background, the sky doesn't change. It doesn't look any more cloudy or anything than it did before versus there's another screen or not screenshot. There's another clip here where Super Saiyan Vegeta is doing the big bang attack and you know there's clouds and everything around them too and i remember them mentioning how the environment in terms of the sky will change based off of i don't know exactly what it's gonna be based off of it sounded like it was maybe just as long as the battle heightens the more crazy stuff that's going on i think that's how it'll work but this pretty much does debunk my theory that i had where i thought that you know just doing super moves it could just it could still be for some type of burst mode or raging soul or whatever they call it in this game i think that would make a lot of sense However, just for straight up super moves, in the previous Raging Blast and Tenkaichi games, I think Raging Blast did it also, the background, the sky would darken. But in this game, it doesn't look like that's the case for regular super moves, which I don't mind. Like, you know, it is what it is. This still looks cool, so I'm not, I'm not tripping about it. But that was something else that I definitely did notice there. Um, so they're not taking everything from Tenkaichi, but that's a really minute change. So it doesn't affect me that much also want to throw this one in here too i'm pretty sure y'all saw this one but i just think it's really cool when super vegeta is charging up with this attack the grass around him actually coming up from the ground to show just like more of the effects with this game listen i'm not trying to be that guy but if you don't have a current gen system yet and by current gen i mean ps5 or xbox series s x whatever or pc you need to get one. This game's not coming out on PS4. It's not coming out on Switch or Xbox One. Like, you need to catch up because this, th those those consoles can't handle this. I'm sorry. Like, it just can't. But on the bright side, though, I, I have a PS5, so I'm good. And I have a PC. This just looks great. Like, I, I, I really like this a lot. I'm wondering how that's also going to look with other super moves in the game and ultimates. But let me know if y'all think they're being a little extra with that because I did see someone on Twitter say that, which I don't necessarily agree with. I think it's dope either way. Um, the more the merrier as long as it's not like clouding the whole entire screen to where you can't see nothing I'm cool with it. So this part was something that I really wanted to discuss in this video I was gonna make a tweet about it But I, I decided to save it for here just so that I can see what you guys think on here as well Because I think YouTube is just better for that when Goku and Vegeta specifically Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta are exchanging blows here We haven't seen this exact set of animations in any of the previous Tenkaichi games um, or even in the Raging Blast series. I don't know exactly what this means, but I have a couple guesses. My number one guess is that it could just be the intro animation, which there's a couple different animations we've seen. There's a few actually that could potentially be intro animations like, you know, before the, the before the battle starts. So. I don't know because in Budokai Tenkaichi, they would just, it would, you know, the characters would do their pose, exchange words depending on who you're using, depending on what they would say, and then the battle would start, uh, which we've seen that in Sparking Zero already, but we've also seen that one clip where it showed Goku and Vegeta fighting in the beginning of the last trailer, and here, Super Saiyan 2, Goku and Super Saiyan Vegeta are exchanging blows like that. I don't know if it depends on, like, the version of the character you're using to what, oh, maybe actually, maybe it depends on if you're using, like, Dragon Ball Super Goku and Dragon Ball Super Vegeta, because that was the ones in the previous trailer. They have a specific intro animation, and then Super Saiyan Blue, or not Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta have this as the animation, and then, for example, early Goku and Scouter Vegeta just do the regular poses. Maybe, I mean, that would be pretty sick, in my opinion. That, that opens a lot of room for different possibilities, but I let me know what y'all think about that. And my other theory with this is that I think that there was this thing, in, it's in Raging Blast as well, but it doesn't work the same as in Tenkaichi, where the only time I can really think of, which I'll show you footage here, was when the was when you fight Grade 8, I don't know if he was Grade 8, but you fight Vegeta, Scout of Vegeta in the story mode, with Goku, and they go around the map, and you have to press the right button at the right time, and if your opponent gets it, then they win, if you get it, then you win. It's not exactly the same thing as this, unless they might be reworking it, but... I mean, that's the only, like, you know, which each blow, it's like, you know, press square, uh, press circle, press triangle, press X. I'm not calling it cross. <laughs> press X. You know, that's another possibility that I could think of with that that happens mid-battle. But honestly, I don't know. I feel like it could go either way. I really do.
Let's talk about Majin Vegeta right quick in the transformations. I We saw Goku, obviously he transformed from Super Saiyan 2 into Super Saiyan 3 here. And then right after it shows Majin Vegeta's pose. I know a lot of people are saying, and listen, I think it would be cool. But I don't think that Vegeta transformed into Majin Vegeta here. Again, I'm going to say it, I think it would be cool. But I don't think he did. I think that with Majin Vegeta, because it doesn't look like a transformation, it, at least in my opinion. It just looks like a, like a character intro. I think that was just his intro, and then prior to that, they just had Goku transform. Um, it, it, I don't know. I think that one's also up in the air just because in the Tenkaichi games, like, well, really the Spike Chunsoft games, Majin Vegeta was always his own character. In the Budokai games, you could transform into Majin. I think, yeah, you could transform into Majin in those games, but not Tenkaichi. So, I don't know if they'll take that aspect from the Budokai games, but... I'm not expecting it. I mean, to me personally, it just doesn't look like a transformation sequence, but that's okay for me, honestly. Another little preview that they gave us in the trailer here as well. I'll try to make it as clear as possible here. To me, this clearly looks like Majin Vegeta is charging his key as Goku just completely obliterates him with this Kamehameha, but yeah, I mean, we see what one of the charging animations looks like in the game. I think that the Super Saiyan auras are a little hit or miss right now. They either look really good in the trailer or they look kind of crappy in my personal opinion but here we do and this does kind of resemble how Majin Vegeta charged like the, the stance that he was in in the previous Spike Chunsoft Dragon Ball games so to see it look like that I think it looks dope even from a distance I can't wait to see what it looks like you know when you're just behind the character and they're charging or like you're in their face but yeah um we got a charge animation so yeah there you go in this section right here when Super Saiyan God Goku and Super Saiyan God Vegeta are fighting. Obviously here, you know, when it shows them exchanging blows, that's just, you know, when two characters charge towards each other and then you gotta either mash the buttons or, you know, spin the analog stick. I pray it's the buttons. I'm not spinning a PS5 analog stick for this game. I'm not doing it. Especially online, that's not happening. But anyway, it shows them exchanging blows, which, you know, we, we expect stuff like that coming. But then it cuts over to an ended combo by, by Vegeta... Where after he does that kick, Goku gets pushed away. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I remember in Raging Blast 1, in the end of a basic neutral combo, unless you canceled it into something else, by default they would just push the characters away, which I didn't like that at all from Raging Blast 1 personally. However, in the Budokai Tenkaichi games as well, depending on the combo you do, and depending on the buttons you press, that can also be the case of most neutral combos. They're, they have a basic neutral combo where they get, like, you just completely knock them away. But then they have other ones where you do, like, a punch or a kick or whatever. And it's just, like, a, a basic push like this one. So that goes to show me that they're bringing that back. I'm hoping it's, like, how it was in Budokai Tenkaichi. I haven't seen anything yet from this game that makes me think it's more so how it was in Raging Blast. Where it's just the basic neutral combo. But... Um, I mean, the reason I'm bringing this up as well is just because as someone who's played a lot of Budokai, uh, I mean, I mean a lot of Budokai Tenkaichi and a lot of Raging Blast, there's a lot of elements in this game where I was starting to think it was a little more towards like the Raging Blast 3 route from the first trailer. But after seeing this one, this game just straight up looks like Budokai Tenkaichi 4, which I'm all for. I mean, if you were to ask me if I'd rather have Tenkaichi 4 or Raging Blast 3, I'm choosing Tenkaichi 4 any day of the week. So for me personally, that's a W. I'm going to definitely be posting up some more discussions. And follow me on Twitter if you haven't already as well. I tweet a lot of discussions on there in regards to this game. Um, and, you know, we're, we're pretty active on there as well. You know, we have some good comments going. And some things I even get from people on there as well. So let me know what y'all think about this. I'm going to catch y'all next time. And yeah.